I've prepared an example to show you how to perform grid-based movement. Let's hit play. And we have a small sphere which always goes to the next adjacent field and it selects randomly which, which direction it goes. So let's just increase speed a little. Now what's really cool is you see the sphere never goes this never goes beyond the grid, so you might think maybe I hard-coded these values, but if I increase the grid... Uh, wait, 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 yeah, it goes off the limits, and if I make the grid smaller, it adapts automatically. So let's see how to make this. Let's start off with an empty scene. We create a game object, create empty, and let's call it grid1, grid1 and apply our rectangular grid class to it. Set size, 5 and 5 should be enough. Z size will be set to 0, so we get a flat grid. And the rest is fine as it is. Next, create a sphere. sphere. And maybe reduce size a little bit. Okay, position it anywhere. Position doesn't really matter. So next thing we need a script. Create. I'm going to use JavaScript for this example. And I'm call, calling it Rome Grid. So apply it to our sphere. Ah oh, never mind. So let's start writing our let's start writing our script. We won't be using this. We won't be using any of these. First thing we need is a variable for our grid. I'm going to call it simply grid. And type is rectangular grid. And I'm also going to create another variable to cache the transform. Which is good for performance. The next thing we need is three functions. Awake. The function to roam the grid. And one final function to find the nearest face. First thing we need to do is cache our transform. always a good idea. Then, as you see, our sphere is not always in the grid phase. We could position here and we need it to be here. So what I'm do going to do is align. So I call grid.align.transform cached transform roam the grid And to make sure we don't run into any errors, we should perform a sanity check. So if grid, then do this, or else don't do anything. So how do we find a face? Well, first we need a variable. New position of type vector3 which equals, sorry, so what we do is we take the sphere's world position and then convert it to grid coordinates. So we call grid.world to grid cached transform.position. Oops. Then we need a random number, so int integer i equals random dot range from zero to four, which gives us four cases.
So what I'm going to do now is take new position and add a vector 3. In this case 1, 0, 0, which means we're going one unit right. If i is 1, then we go one unit to the left, minus 1, 0, 0. If it's 2, we go one unit up, which is 0, 1, 0. And if it's 3, we go one unit down. So this doesn't look bad already, but we need still a limit. So what I'm going to do is write a small check. So for variable j of type integer equals 0, j less than equal than 2, and j plus plus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through the x coordinate and the y coordinate and check for each one if it's still inside the limits. So if mathf dot apps of u position j, which means in this case if j is 0 I get the x component, if j is 1 I get the y component, if j is 0 is 3 I would get the z component, which I'm not going to use. So if it is greater than grid dot size of the same component. In that case, what I'm going to do is set new position j to the other direction. So I'm going to perform mathf dot sign of new position phi j times 2.0. So what I've done here, let's say our sphere is here, and we roll a number which would mean we are going here. So we're off the limits, and what I want to do instead is go into the opposite direction. So I need to subtract two times this direction. So that's what, is two, that's what 2 stands for. What mathf sign does is it returns minus 1 if this value is negative, it returns 1 if the value is positive, and it returns... and yeah, that's it. So, if we are going to the left, we would have rolled a minus 1. So, we add minus minus 1 times 2, so it means plus 2. Plus 2 means plus 1, plus 2. Assuming we are on the right side and we roll a 1, in that case we would get minus 2 times 1, so minus 2. Minus 1, minus 2. Simple basic math. So now that we're done, all we need to do is return the value and we need to return it in world space. So we've been working in grid space the whole time, but we need it to be in world space. So I'm just going to call grid dot grid to world of new position. Uh, now the only thing that's left is basically implement the movement. I'm going to use iTween for this. If you don't know iTween, it's a tweening framework which is freely available on Unity Asset Store, so there's no real reason not to use it. You could roll your own function, but for purpose of demonstrating this, it's really the easiest way. I'm going to write itween.move2 game object, which is the current object, comma itween.hash, and now I pass the arguments. The first one is position, and now here comes find nearest face. So what it means is I'm going to use 
the value I get returned here. So I'm going to use this function to find the nearest face, and then in this step, I'm going to actually move there. And just a few more options. Let's set the time, which is, uh, I guess I'm going to add a, a variable. Uh, roaming time of type float equals, let's say, one second. Roaming time. Uh, now I'm going to add an on complete, which will be exactly this function. So what it does is, once I've once once I've performed the movement, so which means on complete, it will repeat the same function and find another vert another face and move there, and find another face and move there, and so on for all eternity. Or at least until I stop playing. And one final check. If roaming time less than 0 0.01, then let's say it, let's set it to 0 0.01. Why? Because you could set a value to something negative and then you'd get an error. Don't really need it just to be safe. So let's take a look. Do we get any errors? I'm just going to correct typos quickly. Okay, that takes care of everything. So let's apply our script. Wrong grid. And we need... Oh, just one more thing. We can actually set this to private, so it doesn't show up in the inspector. Anyway, take your grid and insert it here, and then hit play and hopefully everything works out. Yep, works fine. Again. Let's change the size of our grid. Yeah, come, come on. Yeah, good boy. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. Grid-based movement in a few lines of code. Really easy, a few minutes. And now it's up to you. You can use for enemies, use for the players. You can add your own AI, your own input handler. Basically, basically everything, anything you want. So that's it for now. Have fun.